Halkados, I just wanted to share with you an inspiring idea, which I think actually could apply to every single one of us during this time. It once happened with Rav Shaul Rubin. He was a Rosh Kolel Nafula, and he had many different roles. So every single time he used to go to the Kolel, he used to sit on the bus, but he was learning from the beginning until the end. It once happened that sat beside him a prison warden, a very famous, from a famous prison in Eretz Israel. And at the end, he comes and he asks the rabbi for permission. He wanted to ask him a question. So the rabbi says, okay, fine. So he tells him, listen, I've got this religious person in, in, the, in the jail and prison. He's a misarev get. He doesn't want to give a get to his wife. He doesn't want to give the divorce bill to his wife. And therefore, he's locking her up. He's keeping her in Aguna for many years. So what happens? He obviously doesn't have where to go, what to do. So he does it all the time. He's always in prison. That's what he does. But it hurts me. What can we do to influence him, to give a get to his wife, to give this to his wife, so that way he could free her from her problems? The rabbi thinks for a few minutes, and he says something incredible. He says, you know what the problem is? He says, the problem is, is that he already adapted to what it is, the conditions of prisons. He right now forgot what it is to live a normal life. And because of that, what happens is, is that for him, it's not a punishment to stay in jail. You're going to keep him in jail longer, longer, longer. You're not doing anything. So he says, if you want him to give a get to his wife, you want him to give this divorce bill, you know what you do. Very simple. Let him out. Let him free. And even if you're going to free him for a very short amount of time, for a Shabbat, and obviously under very strict you know, conditions and restrictions, you're going to free him. All of a sudden, when he breathes this air of freedom to come back, he's going to dread it. He'll be running on Sunday instead of running back to the prison he'll run to the Bedin to give her a get. Exactly, this prison warden listened to the advice of this rabbi, and that's exactly what happened. Immediately, on Sunday, what happened was is that he went to his freedom, because he was in jail only because he didn't want to give this get to his wife, and his wife was also freed. They were both freed from their problems. They were both liberated. In Parashat Emor, how is this connected to us? And listen carefully. Parashat Emor, we have the concept of Sefirat HaOmer. That's what we've been doing from Pesach until Shavuot. It says, you're going to count for yourselves. From the day after Shabbat, which we're going to explain now. From when you're going to bring the Omer, the Korban HaOmer. The word the day after Shabbat does not apply to Sunday, which is the day after Shabbat. It applies to the day after Pesach, which means this for us in the diaspora, it's the second day of Yom Tov. But in Israel, it's the day after Pesach. It's the first day of Chol Moed. That is called Mimachorat Shabbat, And therefore, they start counting the 50 days. And we have Shavuot. The Sadducees, the Tzedokim, they made a mistake because they always thought Mimachorat Shabbat is exactly what's written in the Torah. Mimachorat Shabbat, the day after Shabbat. So it's Sunday. So therefore, no matter when Pesach falls out, they will always start Sefirat HaOmer on Sunday, and therefore Shavuot will always be accordingly by right, the same day of the year. Why? Because they always start counting the 50 days from a Sunday. The Netivot Shalom, the more of Slanim, one of the Hasidic rabbis comes and he asks an incredible question. Two questions. Question number one, he says, why does it say in the Torah, Machorat Shabbat? If you see that people did make a mistake and they interpreted Machorat Shabbat the day after Shabbat, which is Sunday, say, Machorat Pesach. Why are you going to say Machorat Shabbat and give them room for mistake, for error? Another question that he asks is as follows He says, What's the concept? Usfatem Lachem. Count for yourselves. We are counting between Pesach and Shavuot. Something is left for us. Something we take with us. That it's Usratem Lachem, you're counting for yourself. What is yourself? 
But rather, Chachamim come and they say that it's actually something a little bit deeper. They say it's in the, in the inner content, right, or the essence of what is Sefirat Aumet. The Chinuch says, the uh, Sefer Chinuch, he comes and he says, the entire purpose of Yitziat Mitzrayim was to get to Mamad Har Sinai, to get to Kabbalat Torah. And we know that. Whether it was because when we were going to leave Mitzrayim, we didn't even need riches. Because when Abraham Avinu was told we were going to come up with the big riches, it was going to be Matan Torah, but only just because on our level we didn't understand that, so we needed materialistic wealth. But the entire purpose was Matan Torah. As we actually say, when the Kosh Baruch Hu is going to take us out of Mitzrayim, we're going to serve the Kosh Baruch Hu on this mountain. So that was the purpose, which means Sefirat HaOmer was only just to get from Pesach till Shavuot. But now, what exactly is happening now? Do we ever realize there's a huge difference between Pesach and Shavuot? Why? On Pesach, we completely refrain from anything that has to do with chametz. Chametz is completely asur. We completely throw it out, nothing. You can't see it, you can't own it, nothing. However, though, Chag Shavuot, not only is chametz permitted, but it's one of the main korbanot is made out of chametz, which means we're going to bring mincha chadasha Hashem. it has to come from chametz, which is not like any other korban. Why was it so important? So we know that the Ramban says in his letter, the Yigeret Ramban, when he's speaking about different midot that a person has, he says that the worst of all the midot is midat ga'ava, being haughty. And the best of all the midot is midat anava, being humble, being noble. Why? Because the ga'ava is the shortish, is the roots of all the negative energy and all the negativity that we have in our, in our surroundings. And the anava being humble is the shortish of all the midot tovot, all of the good attributes and characteristics that we have. And therefore, kam chachamim and they say, matzah represents humbleness. It's flat, there's nothing there, there's nothing. When we have bread, bread is a semel of haughtiness. It grows, it rises, brings it up. And therefore, come chachamim and they say, what's exactly going on? Pesach, we're having now no haughtiness, no nothing, matzah, humble. Come Shavuot, and all of a sudden we have chametz. We dafka want the chametz. We want this. What's going on? And therefore, come chachamim and they say that that's the difference between Pesach and between Shavuot. Pesach is the Sur Merah. It's we're trying to take away and we're trying to get rid of all the negative energy within, within us. And therefore, the first step is take away all the chametz. The chametz, which is the concept of anything negative, anything bad that we have, completely prohibited. You cannot see it, you cannot have it, you cannot own it, nothing. Get rid of it. He says, however, though, we have to realize that we don't believe in the concept that there's no such thing as anything materialistic. Afterwards comes Shavuot. What do we have now? We consecrate and we elevate the materialism, right? Everything that has to do with Gashmiut, the materialistic things that we have in this world, and all of a sudden we instill in it purity. We put all the Ruchmiut there, and that's Shavuot. All of a sudden we're going to come, and we're going to add it. Now we actually understand why it says, that on Shavuot, everybody agrees that you also need chetziol lachem, that we have to enjoy, right? And we're talking about enjoying of physicalities, of good food, of everything that we have, we have our nice cheesecakes, and everything that are so delicious. Why? If anything, it's a Chag Matan Torah, learn Torah 24-7 from the beginning of Shavuot until the end of Shavuot. It says, no, according to everybody you need it. Why? Because Shavuot don't think that the way of learning Torah is only just to take the Torah and dip, put yourself inside of it, and that's it. We are supposed to elevate the materialism around us. And that's the essence of Shavuot that we're supposed to have. When Bnei Israel came out of Mitzrayim, we had a technical problem. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, right, took us out. But when he took us out, he said, I, goy mi goy. I took a nation from within another nation. 
What does that mean? We were so deep, deeply involved. We were entrenched in all the filth and the tumah of Mitzrayim. We were deep inside and we didn't even realize it. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu takes us out and we're still in the Sharia Tumah. Now what happens? He has to detach us from there. How does he do that exactly? And therefore, with this, he has to bring us a gilui that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to take us out. They bring a beautiful parable to illustrate this to a child. The child was a very, very good child until one day he went off the path and he started attracting himself to all these criminals and villains and evil people. What happened was is that everyone became disgusted with this child. There was only one person that didn't, and that was his own father. The father loved him so much. So the father went, and he had to go into the lion's den in order to come and to, to save his son. But when he comes and he tries to take his son from there, his son doesn't want to go with the father. But the father already knew this. So what does he do? He comes and he puts him to sleep. He tranquilizes him that all of a sudden now he's put asleep and he carries him quickly. He gets him out of there and he puts him into his bed where that's where he grew up. He thought that with this auspicious paternal warmth, the love, the tender loving care of a father that he would give to his child, he thought that that might actually cure the child. Then I might actually, that would give you the last hope of actually removing himself from it. So therefore, at the beginning, he knew, I have to get him away. Sur merah, get him away from all negativity. And then only afterwards, I'm going to have to come, v'aseto. Pesach was a sur merah. Get us out of Mitzrayim, or get Mitzrayim out of us. But now we have to continue going, v'aseto. Now we have to continue going until we get to Shavuot. Inside of the Jewish body, we have two different parts. We have what's called the neshama, and we have the nefesh, which is a chelik, nefesh alokit, and we have a nefesh abemit. The nefesh abemit, which means like the animalistic part of our body, of our souls. At the end of the day, we come from a farmina adama, we come from the dirt. And on the other hand, we also have, the, we come from a Nichelet Minu Kamina, we come from a Kosh Baruch Hu. What happens is, is that we have to work together. We have to bring the body and the soul to work in unison to get to a Kosh Baruch Hu. And therefore what happens is, is that we are purposely coming and trying to elevate the Chomer, elevate everything that we have materialistic in this world in order to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But there's two ways of doing this. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, how does he detach us from our bad? How does he detach us from our evil? So he says there's two ways. Either he brings us a miracle, and that miracle will, will act as a catalyst, will act as a medium to bring us closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, because we see the hand of Hashem, panim el panim, face to face, and now we want to continue. Or chas v'chalila, chas v'shalom v'kukam, through suffering. And only because of sufferings and problems, calamities, will actually bring us to become closer to a Kalash Baruch Hu. In Yitzhak Mitzrayim, we had this of the Nisim. We had Nisim Gruim, complete miracles, that we saw with the hand of a Kalash Baruch Hu, and it was in order for us to continue going. We saw the miracles. We realized what we needed. We saw the truth. We were freed. We were liberated from all our Yitzhak just like this person was liberated from jail. Now he says, I want freedom. I want to continue. That actually helped us during the entire Sefirat Omer. And now we understand what it means. We are counting for ourselves. Why is it for ourselves? Because Bemet, it's for us. We need to count it. Because every single day we are counting and we are fixing. One of our midot, we're doing self-introspect. We are becoming better people. We're working. Every single person is different. Everyone has their own flaws. And therefore, what happens? We have to work, whether it's going to be on caste, on anger, on haughtiness, becoming more humble, whether it's going to be jealousy, and all the other midotraot, very pessimistic, always looking things in the negative light. And therefore, what happens is, is now all of a sudden we have to change. Sefirat Omer is the key that after Kalosh Baruch that we came and we had this Lela Seder, 
and we actually felt what it was, all of a sudden now, that's going to give us the strength to continue going through this miracle. And now we're going to become better. And every single day of Sifidat Talmud, it's another brick and another brick, and we keep on going. And we're going one step after another step, and we keep on climbing until we get to Matan Torah. And then we completely have elevated ourselves to accept the Torah. So now we answer when we started off, why is the written Musratem Lachem? Why do you have to count for yourselves? But we still have, why is the written Machorat Shabbat? It should have been written Machorat Pesach, not Shabbat. Right? And that was the question, as we already mentioned, of the Admor Mislamim. And he comes and he answers, no, you know why? Shabbat is the concept of sanctity in this world that comes from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Everyone comes and they feel the aura of the Shabbat. They feel a special holiness. And that comes from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He brings it down and he sanctifies us. And we feel that purity. We just have to tap into it. And therefore what happens is, is he explains, why does it say Machorat Shabbat? Just like the Shabbat is what gives us this strength this inner strength inside of us to come and to take out all this evil. So too, that was the essence of Pesach. When we come on the night of Pesach, we see the little seder, and we had this enthusiasm, we had this inspirational seder, that we were able to continue going. That's what gives us the strength to go mechay lelchay into Shavuot. And therefore, here the Pesach is acting like Shabbat. It's not acting like just Stam, that it's a Pesach, not just Stam a Chag, it's acting like the same holiness of Shabbat because that's the key to open up the door and to let us climb all those stairs to get to Matan Torah. I just hope during this time that we are still continued, whether it's in quarantine, we still don't have our Batek Nesiot, we're still having all the sufferings around us, whether it's from the economy, whether it's from all the people that have different problems. We just stop and focus to ourselves one second. Sefirat Almin is the time to stop, to ponder, to reflect on whether it's perfecting our midot. We remember that the students of Biakiva, 24,000 students died. Shelo na'agu kavod zebazeh. No na'agu kavod zebazeh does not say that they were causing strife and they were nicknaming each other and they were doing negative things. They didn't give the proper respect to every single other human being. We once gave a shiur that it was purposely done, but that's not for now. But we think to ourselves, look what's happening. If I don't give proper respect to another Jew, that could actually cause deaths much more than coronavirus. Because here we're talking about 24,000 students of Riyakiva, his entire empire collapsed within 33 days. Everything went, there was nothing left. So finally he had to get the five students, Rabotenu Shabbat Darom, one of them, Rabbi Mir Balanes, which is Nachalai, Zanskaraz today, the Yortzeit, Milulav Rabbi Mir Balanes, and another one will be Shimon Bar Yochai, which is going to be Lag Baomen on Monday night, Tuesday. But again, everything was done because we have to realize, let's be sensitive to each other. Let's give, give kavod to each other. Let's see whether it is going to be to our children, to our spouses, to our friends, to our neighbors. Let's give that kavod. Let's fix ourselves. We have to work, whether it's going to be on our cast, on getting angry, whether it's going to be on any other attributes that we have that we have to fix. This is the time, Sefidat HaOmer. We started positively on Pesach. We started with this. Well, let's continue. We have to continue going until Shavuot. Because remember, once we come and we work on ourselves to perfect our Midot, Bezrat Hashem will be able to have a Be'emet Zichya in Matan Torah. We should be Zuchet to have that very quickly. We will be able to be Zuchet to see the Torah again in our Betek to have the Torah in our Betek Midrashot, to have everything, to bring back this crown to the species, to the aura of what it was, this beauty, in order that we could obviously have Mashiach's kingdom in the middle of Shabbat Shalom. We really miss everyone. We hope everyone is safe and sound. Remember to pray, and to have a good luck as well. Enjoy. Shabbat Shalom.